Yo, what is going on guys, Series here. In today's video, we're going to be starting the second video in my GSC scripting series. If you haven't seen the first video, go check it out first because we are going to be building off of some code we did in the last video. And it's important that you have that code because otherwise uh, you're, you're not gonna be able to follow along unless you're uh, a decent GSC coder already. So let's go ahead and get into what we're doing today. Today, our goal is to allow us to toggle God mode on and off and we want it to only be for the host player. Uh, if you'll notice, if you've been following along, this code looks a little bit different. Uh, the reason is I just messed up the last recording and I didn't have a backup of the old code. So uh, just go ahead and delete the stuff that used to be below this line uh, for use player controls to where it looks like this, uh, including the code that we wrote last video. You're also gonna wanna go ahead and download the latest version of the MW3 utility. It will be linked in the description and I'm gonna go ahead and change it to a GitHub link, uh, which means it should be the same for all of my videos. Uh, that also means that in the future, this may look different than what it looks like right now, uh, but it shouldn't affect you because the code should work the exact same way. Uh, if you are a more advanced GSC coder just watching this video to see what I did, uh, something interesting that I think you'll want to use is my is button press function. Uh, it works with all of the buttons in the game. Uh, we also have some code down here. You'll be able to subscribe to notify events for buttons, which I think is gonna be really useful. So definitely check it out. Anyway, back to the tutorial. So once you've got your code looking exactly like this, uh, I wouldn't deviate much from this. Uh, obviously you can, you know, write your own code if you're feeling confident, but if you're just trying to follow the tutorial, I would get to this point. We're going to first make it to where only the host can run some code. Now, if you don't know what the host is or what being host means, uh, in Call of Duty, you will connect to one person who will have all of the game logic running on their system. That person is called the host. So if you're hosting a game, it means all the game logic is running on your system. That's why a lot of the time you'll hear modders say, oh, I need to force host, which means they're forcing themselves to be host of the game, or saying, oh, I need to be host. It's because they need to be able to run all of the server logic on their machine. Otherwise, uh, they're not gonna be in control of the game and anything they do will just basically kick them from the game or the server's not gonna accept it. So we wanna basically check if we are the host. Uh, this should be the same for both Black Ops 2 and any other game you do, uh, except Black Ops 1. Uh, but again, we're not supporting Black Ops 1 in this tutorial series just because it's not up to date enough uh, for this tutorial series. So we're going to do if self is host. Make sure you have these parentheses like this and make sure also that your function has is host and then two parentheses. And then make sure you add open and close brackets. Now, if you want to know what this if statement is, uh, which you're gonna need to know because you're gonna use them a lot whenever you're coding GSC. An if statement just is basically some kind of logic. Uh, read it in plain English. If self is host, do something. Uh, it's the same thing as if you were like, for example, to say, if I have a low amount of groceries, I will go to the grocery store. Uh, it's the same kind of thing. Just take whatever's inside of the parentheses inside of the if statement and basically check whatever it is. And if it evaluates to true, or you know, if the statement is true, uh, then it'll execute whatever's in it. If it's false, then it will not execute anything in here. So if I say self I print line bold, which will print to the middle of the screen in bold, you are now in God mode. And I do self enable and vulnerability. Uh, if I am the host player, whenever I spawn in, it will print, you are now in God mode, and it will enable invulnerability. Uh, let's go ahead and check our syntax, and let's inject this into the game. Okay, it's injected. Let's start the game. Now, it's going to be kind of hard to test if you are the host player uh, or not, uh, because we're playing solo, but if you have a friend to come in and test, you'll notice that they do not get the same print. You see in the middle of the screen, it said you are now in God mode, uh, and I am now invincible. And just to double check, we're gonna go ahead and jump off the ledge, and yeah, we didn't die. So, there you go. 
Okay. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is move this logic to a function. Uh, if you remember, I told you a function is basically just a label or an identifier, uh, then some parentheses and some brackets. To clarify on that, uh, a function is basically a set of commands. If you look at each of these functions, you see there's three functions, init, on player connect, and on player spawned. You see they have some code in them. Well, a function is basically just a group of commands or um, you know a group of code. Uh, and it allows us to basically call things and execute commands without having to rewrite the code over and over again. So we're going to add our own function called god mode toggle. Make sure you add the two parentheses like we always do and add in an open and closed bracket. Make sure this is outside of on player spawned uh, and that it's not inside of any other function. You have to declare functions uh, on their own meaning there shouldn't, they shouldn't be inside of anything. We're going to go ahead and take this code and cut it and paste it in here. And then we're going to take this god mode toggle function and type self thread god mode toggle. Don't worry about what thread means. I'll explain it in another video. Uh, but for a short and quick explanation, it runs it without waiting for the function to finish. Uh, and that's very useful for other things. So the next thing we're gonna do is add something called a while loop. Don't worry about what it does. Uh, long story short, it is going to run the code over and over and over again inside of its loop while the condition is true. And since we put true in here, uh, this will run forever, which is uh, just useful for if we wanna run a, a piece of code over and over and over again. Uh, so we're going to do wait 0.025. That's going to wait a certain amount of time, uh, if you remember from last video. Then we're going to do if self is button pressed. And then we're going to go ahead and put a, a button. I need to check my buttons list. You can pick a button from this list here. It has to be one of these buttons. If it's not one of these buttons, it's not going to work. Don't use any of these, just use these. Uh, and you're going to want to pick one of these white listed identifiers or labels. I want to use the, let's say the use button. So I'm going to use the use button and just put it in my if self is button pressed in here. And I'm going to add some open and close brackets. Make sure that you have your parentheses for each thing. Go ahead and right now, check your syntax, make sure it's correct. Uh, since we're starting to get into some embedded calls uh, and I, it's just to basically make sure that your code doesn't have any issues now. If you do have some issues, go ahead and try to just copy what you have uh, on screen. So if self is button pressed, buttons use. Is button pressed is my custom function for checking if a button is pressed, but it should make sense to you. Uh, if the use button is the button that we have pressed right now, uh, then we're going to do, we're going to try to toggle something. So uh, let's go ahead and do if self dot invulnerable, and we'll add more brackets, self disable invulnerability, self, I print line bold. Make sure you add your quotes. You are no longer in God mode. Okay, don't forget, you have to have a semicolon after every command that you put in. All right, and then we're gonna do something what's called an else statement, else, and then add some brackets. All an else means is basically if whatever statement we evaluated here is not true, then we will go ahead and um, do whatever's in this block. So if we are not invulnerable, basically if, if invulnerable does not evaluate to true, uh, we're gonna do whatever's in this else block. So we'll do self enable invulnerability, self I print line bold, Go ahead and change this to 
you are now in God mode. Add our semicolon. Now, one thing that we did actually forget that I'm going to go ahead and put, go to the top of your function, add another line inside of the brackets, write self.invulnerable equals false. Uh, and then self disable and vulnerability. This is to set up this variable to by default be false. Uh, in Call of Duty, whenever you declare a variable, a variable is just, well, you should know what a variable is from algebra. Uh, if you haven't gone through algebra, coding might be a little bit difficult for you, uh, but it's just some kind of, uh, some kind of value. Um, it's like a property of something. Uh, self just means whoever called this method. So if self.invulnerable, or I'm sorry, uh, self.invulnerable equals false is basically setting it. In Call of Duty, variables by default are not defined. Uh, if a variable is not defined, you'll run into an error whenever you try to use it, uh, except in specific scenarios. So you need to make sure that if you use a new variable, that you set it to something before you use it. Otherwise, uh, you'll run into some issues. Now, there are ways around this, but we'll discuss them in a future video because this video is focused on trying to get us to be able to toggle some God mode. So, if self.invulnerable, disable invulnerability and say we're not in God mode anymore. Otherwise, enable invulnerability and say we are in God mode. Now, uh, this is not going to... Well, I'll show you what happens whenever we do this. Uh, some of the more experienced coders watching this video will already see the problem, but we're going to go ahead and try to inject. Let me check our syntax, make sure everything's good. If you get a syntax error, make sure that you copied the code exactly how it is on screen. And go ahead and inject. Okay. Go ahead and spawn in. Now we're going to hold our use button and you'll see it spams the screen. You see how it's going, you're in God mode, you are no longer in God mode. Well, the reason that happens is because we only, we wait 0.25 sec or 0 0.025 seconds uh, in between every run of this code, right? Because if you remember a while loop, it's going to run the code over and over again. Well, if we're holding down the button, uh, when this loop runs again, it's just going to toggle it again. So while we're holding down the button, it's just going to keep going over and over and over and over again. So we need to add either a longer delay, which is what most people do, or we're going to do it the right way. And we're going to say while self is button pressed. And then we want the button that we used. Wait, 0 0.025. And what this is going to do is this is while our, we have this button pressed, we're just going to wait, which means whenever this code stops running, it means we are guaranteed to know that the button is no longer pressed and we can continue with the code. Uh, that means that it's basically only going to run this one time per, per press. Uh, there is a more efficient way to do this with my library, but we're not going to get into that in this video because it requires uh, wait tills and notifies, which we haven't got into yet. So let's go ahead and check our syntax again and inject. And we'll go ahead and start the game. Okay. And let's go ahead and check out our function. If I press the use button, I'm now in God mode. If I press it again, I'm not in God mode. And to check that it's working, I'm gonna enable God mode, jump into the well, I'm okay. I'm gonna disable God mode and now I die. And there you go, we have toggling God mode. Now there is one thing that's a problem. Uh, you see how if I press it after I died, it comes up twice. This is because of the way our initial function is set up. If you look at the code here, it just says wait until spawn player unfreeze our controls, and then thread the god mode toggle. Well, that's an issue because that means every time that we spawn, uh, it's going to run our, our god mode function, which means this, this loop is being run over and over and over and over and over again. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just add this line to the top, 
self and on death. Um, what that's going to do is whenever we die, this function, uh, it doesn't matter what it's doing or where it is, it's just going to stop. Uh, end on just basically means whenever we are running the function and we, we get a notify, which we'll talk about in another video, uh, to kill the function. So as long as we add this line right here, now we can just inject. Okay, project set up again, start the game. And we went over 15 minutes, oh well. It'll be over soon. <laughs> uh, now, I spawned a little bit far from the well, but that's okay. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and enable and disable god mode. Hold a grenade, and I should die because I'm not in God mode anymore. And when I respawn, you see we can still toggle it correctly. And there you go. Uh, what's interesting about this is now your script is set up to where if you went online with this uh, and you got host, of course you have to be host. We'll talk about force host in another video. Uh, you would be able to enable God mode for yourself whenever you spawn, whenever you want, as long as you press the use button. Uh, and of course that would be kind of annoying uh, because the use button would be used for other stuff so you might want to put it to an action slot or something but um, yeah just play around you can swap the buttons if you want just make sure if you swap it here you swap it here as well uh, these buttons need to match and uh, I think that's it for this video if you have any questions ask in the comments below I know we covered a lot in this video and I'll make sure to be covering it over and over again in the future videos uh, the concepts we learned in this video uh, but there you go there's some cool stuff uh, I've been trying to keep the videos to about 15 minutes. We went over, we're at about 17 minutes. Uh, oh well. Uh, but yeah, each of these videos should be around uh, 15 minutes in the future. Uh, and for the people who are more advanced who followed this video, hopefully you learned uh, some of the ways that I set up my toggles and, and threads to actually work without being, you know, really weird, like having long longer wait times or you know whatever uh, anyway that's it if you guys enjoyed the video leave a like share it uh, get this circling so that people can learn GSC and I'll see you guys in the next video peace